Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Today I got a great video in Microsoft Excel covering one of my favorite functions, count ifs. Uh, this video came because a couple people asked me how do I find numbers between a range or how do I find dates for the month of uh, January uh, through June. So that is count ifs with an S. So before I get started, I'm just going to do one count if without the S first. So you can see why I'm showing you count ifs. So if I wanted to know in my data, starting in column B, I've got customers. Column C is invoice. Invoice date is over in column D. In column E, I threw in a country code. So CA is not California. The country code CA is Canada. Australia is AU, United Kingdom is GB, the United States is US. So I've got four country codes going down column E. And then over in column F, I've got products. I made them A, B, C, and D. So if you wanted to simply know how many times was product A ordered? Well, I would use count if, no S. This has two criteria. It wants to know first the range. Well, product A could be inside of F2 through F12, comma. Argument number two is what are you looking for? I'm looking for product A. I put it in double quotes. It is not case sensitive. Capital A, little a, it doesn't matter. And that is, the answer is four. One, two, three, four. The problem is, count if will only count one criteria. So I have a video already on count if. Uh, I'll put a link down below. But you can just always use count ifs. And so this is where one of the questions came from. The questions were specifically about dates, which get tricky. And I'm going to do the dates three different ways with count ifs. But let me just show you how count ifs work with text first. So the question might be, in row 14, what if you're in Australia and I only want to see product A? How many times was that ordered? Well, Australia's AU and it's going to be an E2 to E12. Product A is still an F2 to F12. Count ifs handle multiple criteria. Unlike count, though, you put in your criteria range first. Actually, it's the same as count if you put in your criteria range first, comma. Now, I'm looking for two different things. I'm looking for Australia and A. There's no right or wrong answer, but I usually work from left to right. I find that easier to use, but I technically could have found the product first. So from E2 to E12, what are you looking for? I'm looking for Australia. That is AU, comma. Criteria range two is in bold. What's your next criteria range? F2 to F12, comma. Okay, what are you looking for here? I'm looking for product A. I could continue on with criteria three, four, five. This should work though. Let's see if I get the number two. Australian A, here it is one time in row number four and right below it in row number five, it works. The first one is the letter D, so that didn't work. So two is correct. I'm going to put, y'all know that I love the formula text function because it will show you the formula I use. So if you don't have to keep rewinding this video, there's what I used. Let me also just copy it and put it here so you can see count if, no S, count ifs with the S. Now, here's the whole purpose of this video. So now you understand how count and count ifs work. How many orders were for quarter one? I'm going to do this three times, and I'm going to also end up using the cool function EO month, end of month function for the last one. So here's method one. How many orders for quarter one? Count ifs, invoice date, comma, criteria one, well, quarter one, I'm Assuming that our calendar year and our fiscal year are the same, so that's going to be January 1, 2021, 
through March 31st, 2021. So to get the January 1 in there, I'm basically saying, notice I did a double quotes to start, less than or equal to, and I'm just going to flat out type that date right now. That took care of the first criteria. That's the start date. Comma. Whoops, my bad. No comma yet. Close the quotes. I did a double quote before, greater than. I got to close them after the date. Now the comma. Criteria range two. It's the same range. Comma. Double quotes less than or equal to 3 March 31st, 2021. You can get away with just the, the year. So I, just to prove it, I'm going to do it here. So if you notice in the first argument, I did January 1, 2021. And in this one, I'm just showing you, you can get away with just the two year, the two digit year. I just did 21. I have the number seven. Let me go ahead and pull this down so you can see the formula. Let's go see if that's correct though. Click inside your data range and before you sort, I always tell people this, do a control A because if I saw just this selected and I try to sort, column E and column F would not get sorted. And then your control period jumps you around the range. So control A, control period, and again, this range is pretty small, but if I did control A and control period, and I'm down in row 98,000, I would scroll down and say, oh, I'm missing some rows because I've seen people insert rows in their data range, which is a big no-no. But we're good here. Control A, we're good. So here we go. I'm going to right click any invoice date, point to sort, sort A to Z. Now I've got it in order by dates. Just highlight them real quick. Down in the status bar, the count is the number seven. So we're good. That was method one right here. My least favorite method, by the way. But in this example, if someone said, I only want to know quarter one, I would have used what I just did. <clears throat> the reason it's my least favorite is this reason. What happens if they say, they don't care about quarter one. They just want to know from March 1 to March 31st. Or they want to know 2.15 to 3.15. Well, i got to keep tweaking it. And then you've got to actually change the label over here. So let's make this method two easier. I'm going to put in start date, end date. And I'm going to just keep it with the quarters right now. But I will change this in just one second. So now I've got my date range over here. I'm going to just stay here right here and do it. Equals count if. So this is method two. Highlight this range. It starts off exactly the same. Comma. I still have to do greater than or equal to. The last time, method one, I kept typing 1, 1, 2021. 20, you can see that on row 15. I'm closing it right now. I'm going to join or concatenate. I'm going to concatenate cell I7, which is the start date. Comma. Criteria range 2. Comma. Less than or equal to. Close the quotes. Concatenate the end date. That is it. This is this is the method I actually prefer right here compared to method one. I prefer this method. Still got the number seven. Uh, I'm going to put this one. You also put it next to it. Control C, Control V. So there you go. The answer seven again in the formula. If I change this though, back to my example, I'm going to make this just the month of January. I got two. If I make it 215 to 315, I got two. So it's working, but I'll go back to January just to keep this consistent. 
So far, so good. Last method, I'm going to use the end of month function. And this one, I love this method. So let's put it right here. We'll type in the word month, and I'm going to just do 1 1 21. So I just got one date. Equals count if ifs. Your criteria range is D2 to D12, comma. It starts off exactly like method 2, greater than or equal to join. January 1, 2021. If you notice, though, I don't have an end date here. I did in uh, method 2, comma, criteria range 2. I'm going to highlight, comma, what's your criteria? Well, it's still less than or equal to. I'm going to join, but I don't have I don't have a date to join. I did up in I8. So I'm going to use Excel's EO end of month function. I'm going to explain this just when I do it while I'm going through here. I'm still taking the date January 1. The end of month function has two arguments. The start date, which is the month of January, comma I know it's a little bit off the screen, but it's asking me how many months out do you want to look for for the end of the month? Well, I want to look in this month, so I put a zero. If I put a comma one, I'd be looking into the next month, so I'd get two, we got tw leap year, we got 29 days in February, I would get two twenty nine twenty one. I'll prove that in just one second. So for the month of January, two, there they are. So this is handy when you want to do months. Uh, so here's my example about quarters. Before I do that, let me explain this again. I'm up in the formula bar. So if I make it a one, I know it just says the word month, but I'm looking out two months. So it's January, but I'm going to go out one more month. I've got the number six. So that should be the first two months of the year. The answer is six. So there's that formula. So if I really wanted to go quarterly, I would make it the number three. I'm looking three months from that date. And I have the number eight. My bad, I'll make it two. See, I almost lost myself. Zero is the current month, one is one month out. Two is two months out. See, even everyone makes mistakes. Let's see if that's right. We know it is already. There's the number seven. I would change the word month to the quarter, whatever you're going to call this. But there is your end of month function. Let me make this official and paste it in here. I know you can't see that. There you go. A little small, but there it is. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, before I finish up here, let me tell you what I have coming up real quick. I will have on Thursday, January 16th, I'm going to show the annual percentage rate versus the interest rate. I'm going to, I'm going to pull up some um, mortgage websites, but I'm going to crunch the data in Excel to show you the difference between the interest rate and the annual percentage rate. This happens with home mortgages, home loans. I'm also going to show you, this is going to be cool. Most likely, if you're going to be in a house for 30 years or 15 years, the loan, the uh, lender with the lowest annual percentage rate would be the one you would take. But I'm going to do a break even to show you, you may want to take a higher APR if you're not going to be in the home for the entire time. And I'll show you the break-even point in months when you're better off with one loan versus another loan with different APRs. When I do that video, I'll also discuss paying points on your loan. Coming up also this month, uh, I'm going to show you in Excel again, 
If you invest $2,000 for nine years, how that can accumulate to a million dollars because of compounding. And I'll also do a little bit with email aliases. I appreciate your time. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Have a great day. Thank you.